the plan at the moment is that everyone is going to be going back to school in September and that they are all going to be going back full time. But, well, even the best laid plans don't always work. The government announces a lot of things frequently, um, but at the moment everyone is going back to school and the government has said lots of things which can be interpreted different ways to school. So I'm going to talk about a few general things, but it is down to the individual schools to interpret these the best way that they can and the safest way that they can within the limits of the size of the classrooms, the number of classrooms, the number of students, the availability and number of teachers, the ease of moving around the school. There are so many different ways that um, schools are going to interpret problems with going back in a COVID safe way that the government documents and all the changes that the government keep making to the documents make it really hard. So just because schools do, your school does one thing in one way doesn't mean this is going to be exactly the same way as your friend's school doing it and they might be a different school. So at the moment the government is saying we're going to have year group bubbles. So instead of having like the small class bubbles that we had when the, the little kids went back to school, they're going to be year group bubbles. So group bubbles of potentially hundreds of students. Now at the moment, the students are not going to be moving around. So students are going to be staying in a classroom. And this classroom isn't going to be set out the way that it has before because we do need to have still some form of social distancing in place. So it might be like one student per desk or it might be like every other seat on lab benches. And then teachers are going to be the ones that are moving around. Now, there are problems with this because for some subjects you're set and for some subjects you have options and different schools are going to deal with this in different ways. There is no one way that the government has told schools to deal with this. But the need for social distancing and the limiting of moving around is going to cause problems in subjects which need moving around and interactions, for example, things like drama the need to clean things more rapidly to prevent the spread if somebody touches it passes it on to somebody else is going to limit the amount of practical work that we can actually get done so for things like science especially if we're going to be teaching like say if you're in a classroom and then you have your science lesson in the classroom it is going to be very very hard for any practical work to get done in that classroom so expect there to be big changes However, every single school is going to be dealing with this in a slightly different way. So your school might have a slightly different way of doing this. They might have all of the chairs and tables out in the hall for a year group. Or they might change the timetable so that kind of like Monday, just the core subjects. Tuesday is option A. Wednesday is option B. So that... It is slightly different to what you're used to. You might have lots and lots of maths on one day to allow kind of the set subjects to take place and then on a different day there might be the options taking place and you might be in those groups for your options whereas you might be in set groups on a different day. There are going to be lots and lots of different ways that school's going to cope with this. The virus has not gone away. People are still dying from this. Now, at the moment, people coming back from lots of different holiday destinations have to quarantine, which means there is still the potential for more cases of the virus to be coming into this country from abroad. Places that maybe aren't still under quarantine or people that should be quarantined um, in self-quarantine but aren't. So the virus has still not gone away. So what we can expect to see is localised lockdowns. We can expect to see some closures. Now, I do not think we are going to have a nationwide blanket closure of schools anymore. I don't think that's going to happen. But we might have, like, county-wide closures where all the schools in um, Devon have to close or all schools in like a town we might have a school closure or we might have like a bubble that is closed if somebody within a bubble um test positive then that bubble might just be pulled out and then you might lose some teachers for a period as well 
so it is not going to be back to school everything open i will expect there to be some reports of school closures i don't know how big those school closures are going to be um but it is not going to be all in person teaching from next year there is still going to be i believe a significant amount of online teaching because of the use of center assessed grades for setting exams this year i am expecting that schools are going to have more formal exams so that they have more data to base the center assessed grades on previously we might have like an end topic test and it might be in half an hour and then your teacher maybe like put the the answer up on the board and you marked it yourself and then you hand it in i think it's going to be a lot more formalized then that's where your teacher is going to take it in and mark it and maybe there's going to be more mock exams going on maybe they're going to be more in the hall under exam conditions i think we can expect to see more of that as teachers as schools start to get in place data that if the exams in 2021 are cancelled that those sort of things are ready and in place and that the teachers have the data already the government has asked schools to do staggered drop-offs and staggered end of days so you might have like year seven starting at 8 30 then year eight at 8 45 then year nine at nine o'clock and year 10 at 9 15 and then a later staggered um leaving school also staggered lunch times now this might be within year groups or this might be within bubbles which means you're probably going to have a limited amount of time for lunch as well and probably not as much time out in the playgrounds or in the field as you are used to because they're going to need to get people in get people out and not mixing of bubbles so that if a bubble does have to be closed they can just close that bubble and prove that there's been no interaction between the bubble they've had to close and other bubbles around it because if you get an infection you can just close one bubble great but if it's spread between this bubble and this bubble and this bubble and this bubble then there were lots of problems now obviously i know that some of you have siblings or parents who are also in school so there is going to be mixing between those bubbles but the idea is to keep the mixing as limited as possible so things are not going to be normal at school things are not going to be the same and this is going to be a source of stress for everyone we do need to make sure we are prioritizing and looking after our mental health so that when we go back to school we can cope with this things are not going to be normal but if we behave sensibly then hopefully things will be back to normal as soon as they possibly can be ouch this is why in some videos i have unexplained scratches